So I'm in the midst of this pedal board build, but I'm waiting on some parts, so I'm on hold with that whole thing. The upside is I have lots of pedals laying around and my son is loving using them as building blocks. So in the meantime, I figured I'd show you my current pedal board rig and talk to you about what I like about it and why I'm building a new one. And I just wanted to mention that none of this is sponsored. This is all stuff I've gotten on my own and I just really like. It's a pretty simple rig and it's all centered around this program called Bias Effects. It's this VST and standalone guitar effects software. And it also has an iPad app, which is how I've built this rig. The real part of this that makes this work is this Xsonic X-Tone Pro. This is a pretty impressive piece of hardware. It's an audio interface, MIDI controller, and DI sort of all-in-one. And because it does so many things, it keeps the pedal board pretty simple. And one of the coolest parts about this is it's powered via USB, meaning this board doesn't even need a power supply, it's just all powered off the iPad. Anyways, this thing has all the inputs and outputs you need, like instrument, expression, a mic input, it's got MIDI in and out, and balanced, and left and right outputs. And then the only other thing is this Dunlop mini volume pedal. But anyways, I get all of my tones through this Bias Effects app on the iPad. I originally got into this when I was trying to learn about audio recording and producing my own music. I was looking for a somewhat affordable way to get lots of different tones and experience with different amps and pedals and effects. I found Bias Effects on sale for under $200. And for me, that was a pretty easy entry point. It gave me the ability to build and play around with lots of different rigs and really find the sounds that I like. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised I don't see this talked about more often. I think the sounds you can get out of this are super impressive, and just the range of things you have access to is really great. So the software is pretty similar across all platforms. You have your choice of all the major amps that you would want from low gain to high gain, even some bass and acoustic. And of course, all the different effects, drive, distortion, compression, you've got reverb delays, modulations. I find the interface to be pretty intuitive on this. You can drag and drop effects around, build things like mono or stereo rigs, and do kind of whatever you want. You can also program it to take MIDI commands, which is really how this whole pedal board works. The MIDI is sent over USB through the X-Tone Pro. Then you can map it to all sorts of parameters on individual effects to turn them on and off, to switch presets, tap tempo, lots of different things. I've actually gotten a good amount of live use with this. I have some different presets for the different sort of rigs that I'll use. And then within these presets, I can toggle on and off effects sort of like a stomp mode. Now I've gushed over this a lot and I do really like this software, but there are definitely downsides, which is part of the reason I'm building this other more traditional pedal board. So because this is run on an iPad through an audio interface, it is a little glitchy at times. Sometimes it takes the software a second to recognize the pedal and I even have to disconnect it and reconnect it a couple times until the mini commands start to work. It's definitely something I double and triple check before I play live. And also because this is a licensed piece of software, I've had this sign me out multiple times and then you have to re-authenticate, which of course always seems to happen at the most inconvenient time possible. But if you do get past that, it is really a pretty full featured setup. I have all of this on a pedal board I like from this brand called Guido which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. You hold all the pedals on the board with these clamp mechanisms that tighten with this Allen key. It makes it pretty fast and easy to set up a board, rearrange it, and you don't have to put Velcro or gunk up your pedals with other things. It does make the pedals take up a little bit more space, so you're not really going to be able to cram them together as you would on a normal pedal board, but I think it makes for a pretty clean result regardless. So anyways, yeah, that's my sort of unconventional pedal board rig. And let me know what you think and if you have any questions.